Uh, you know, a lot of 9-to-5 professionals are constantly on the lookout for trading systems that are simple, time efficient and profitable. Something that fits around their job schedule. The goal isn't to find a magic formula for profits, but a disciplined data back approach that helps them participate in the market consistently and intelligently. In one of my earlier videos, we explored exactly that, the mid-cap shop strategy, which was a modified version of the well-known nifty shop concept. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend checking that out first because today's video builds directly on top of that. In this video, we are taking that same framework and applying it to a brand new universe, the NSE small cap 50 stocks. Right? I've run multiple backtests using different input parameters, capital allocation methods, and target variations, and the results are mind blowing. So stick around till the end because I'll not only walk you through the backtest findings, but I'll also share which parameter settings worked best for this version of this strategy. Always do your own research and consult with a qualified financial tax and legal professional before making any financial decision. For those who are new, the original Lifty shop strategy was introduced by Mr. Maheshinder Kaushik, a respected financial educator on YouTube. The idea was refreshingly simple, right? Identify stocks that have fallen significantly below their 20-day moving average, buy them when they are oversold, and exit when they recover by about 5%. It's a pure mean reversion strategy, no complicated indicators, no fancy setups, just a disciplined rule-based system that works beautifully on daily data. I first implemented and backtested this strategy on Nifty 50 stocks, which gave decent, stable returns. But the curiosity didn't stop there. I wondered what if we push this one a step further, right? If large cap are steady and mid cap are fast, what about small caps, the, the real high energy segment of the market, right? So that's where the small cap shop strategy comes in. The concept remains the same. It's still a swing trading system, still long only, and still designed for people who can spare just a few minutes a day. But this time, we use the NSE small cap 50 universe, the top 50 stocks from the small cap category, known for its higher volatility and faster price action. The hypothesis was simple. Small caps could uh, help hit that 5% target faster, improve our rotation, and also boost returns if managed carefully with proper capital controls. Now, let's talk about the, the strategy rules. Most of you would have watched the previous videos, so I don't really want to bore you down with the details. So I'll try to breeze through the rules as quickly as I can. Every evening, just before the market close, say around 3.15 p.m., uh, we identify top five stocks that are farthest below their 20-day moving average. We sort that list to have the ones that have fallen the most from their respective 20 DMA. Then we go down that list one by one. If we are not holding that particular stock, uh, we buy it using the allocated capital, right? Remember, but we buy only one stock per day. If all five stocks are already part of the portfolio, we switch to the averaging mode. In the averaging mode, the rules again are very simple. Step number one, we look at our existing holdings and then we pick those stocks within our holdings that have fallen more than 3% from their buy price. Step number two, among these stocks, remove any stocks where we already have averaged it twice. That is, you bought it the first time, then the price fell below 3%, so you averaged it once. Again, after some time, the stock fell an additional 3% or more, and then you averaged again. Now you have three open active positions for that particular stock. If this is the case, you skip that stock because we are going to limit only three maximum open positions per stock. So step number three, among the stocks that are left, select one stock that has fallen the most and buy it one more time. Again, only one averaging per day allowed. I trust this is clear. Again, if you're unclear, I suggest that you take a look at our mid cap shop video one more time. On the exit side, it's pretty straightforward. We sell the stock when any of our open positions hit the 6% target. That's it. You start at around 3.15 p.m. and then this whole process including the buying and the selling is all done within the next 5 to 10 minutes and it's as simple as that. There are no limits on how many stocks you can sell per day. So sell all the stocks that have achieved your 6% target. For this strategy again, I tested multiple position sizing approaches starting with the static allocation which is nothing but you know you're allocating a set amount for each trade. For example, say 10,000 or 20,000 per trade, right? Then comes the dynamic allocation method in which your position size is, is a percentage of the total available cash. For example, 2 or 3% of your portfolio size is your position size, right? Then finally, the divisor method where the position size changes with the portfolio value. So you divide the total portfolio balance by a divisor, for example, say 40, and then use that as your position size. And again, if this is all confusing, please take a look at the mid-cap shop uh, video where I've explained this in detail. I have a general appeal to make. Uh, close to 80% of the people who watch my videos don't seem to be subscribing. As you're aware, this community is just one person initiative dedicated to help people on their fire and wealth building journey. Running and maintaining this community takes time, effort, and resources from my side. Um, one way you could support this community is by subscribing, liking, and also sharing this content with your friends. This will motivate me to do more such videos and uh, keep this community alive. Thank you. For people who are new to trading and wondering what the Nifty Small Cap 50 is all about, uh, you can go to nsindia.com and then under market data and then indices, you'll find the list of indices here. 
And then if you look through the, the list, you would find the, the nifty small cap 50 here. And these are the, the 50 top uh, stocks within the, the small cap universe. And this is what we would be trading on. And if you are wondering how to find the top five stocks that have fallen farthest down from the 20-day the uh, moving average, I've built a small Python screener here. Uh, this Python screener basically picks up the, the list of nifty small cap 50 list from NSE directly and then runs through the logic and then gives you the top five uh, you know stocks that have fallen the most from the 20 day EMA right so this is a daily uh, screener that can that you could actually run during just before the market close and then you would get the list of those five stocks right and this particular code is included within the you know the the back testing package here uh, the link to which you can find within the, the the video description and now we come to the the back testing python script itself this is the script that i had built uh, to test this particular strategy and uh, here you could see as input we have given all the the small cap 50 stocks here the from the list that i showed you from the NSE side, and that's given as input. In terms of the, the backtesting period, uh, we start from the 1st of January 2020, so the, the COVID period is also included, so that way we can we can also see how the strategy would have performed uh, during the COVID period as well. And then uh, all the, the uh, test results from this backtesting is stored uh, within this particular file name, and this is the, the main class where the backtesting really happens here. So as part of this backtesting, there are multiple parameters that we need to consider, right? Starting from the position size, we have three different position sizes. And then if it is static, then we have we are considering uh, 10,000 and 20,000 for the fresh buy, which is when you buy the stock for the first time if you don't have it in the holding. And then you have, an, when you're averaging it, you, you, you use a different position size, which is again 10,000 and 20,000, 10,000 for the, the first buy and then the 20,000 for the averaging buy, right? So so there are again four combinations within, within that particular item itself. And then in case of dynamic, uh, I've given 1.5%, 2%, and 2.5%, again, one for the fresh buy and one for the the, uh, the averaging, right? In terms of devices, we start from 10 devices, 20, 30, and 40, similarly for the fresh and the, the averaging buy, right? And then the target parameters, uh, originally the, you know, the, the default, uh, you know, target was 6%, but we are also considering 3 and 8% just to see, you know, which one does, does better and which one basically gives us the, the most uh, risk-adjusted return, right? Um, the average trigger percentage, which is the percentage a stock has to fall before we start averaging, right? We discussed about a 3% rule, right? If the stock falls below 3%, then it is ready for averaging. In this case, I've considered 3 and 5% also, just to again see, you know, which is the most optimum average uh, trigger percent that we could use. And finally, how many maximum positions can we hold for a stock? And uh, during the rules, I explained about uh, 3, right? Maximum 3 positions, which is 1 fresh buy and 2 average uh, position. But I've also just for fun considered five to see if that would make a difference and it can it can give us better returns, right? So as you can appreciate, there are multiple uh, permutations and combinations of, of these uh, uh, input parameters. And then what I've basically done is set up a script to test every single scenario. Uh, there were close to about 350 scenarios that the this, this particular backtest script tested. And then when I got the output for each of those scenarios, then I sorted it based on the highest return. And, and found out the, the best setting that gave us the, the most return, right? So that was the, the overall scope of this backtesting. So like I said, after the, the 350-odd combinations of testing completed, the backtesting script would uh, record all the final results from each of those backtesting into this the consolidated final uh, CSV file, which is also included as part of the, the backtesting script. So you can really take a look at every single scenario and the associated trade book also. And now the, the final results of the testing that you've all been waiting for, uh, this is the, the final consolidated sheet that I was talking about. And uh, you know this is basically ranked on the, the scenarios that basically gave us the maximum uh, the net PNL percentage here, which is this particular iteration, which is iteration number 161, right? And, and it is a, a divisor mode uh, iteration where we are going for a fresh buy of the 10 divisor. And then for the averaging also, we use a 10 divisor. The target percentage is six. The average down percentage is going to be 3%. And then the maximum positions that we can hold is three, right? So for this particular combination, uh, we, we got a net PNL of about 17.2 lakhs, right? Remember, we started off with a, a four lakh initial capital. But what I really found out was not all four lakhs was deployed. So even if we consider that entire four lakhs as the initial capital, uh, given the 7.22 returns, we got about a 430% return in the, the last five years, five years and eight months. And that's that's the total findings from this backtest. So this entire list, along with the all the, the combinations uh, you, you can find, and then you can also find the individual trade books for each of these iterations are also available as part of the backtesting package. So as usual, we'll finish off by looking at the, the actual strategy performance in our uh, dashboard. So for people who are new, this is uh, the dashboard that I built and I personally use uh, to track the performance of my strategies. So in this case, we're going to be looking at the, the iteration 161, which basically was the, the topmost, right? The one that had uh, the maximum returns. And this is what it basically looks like. So we had about 692 total trades. And then 
the the actual investment this is what i was talking about though we started off with the the 4 lakh investment uh, the actual out of pocket investment that went in into the strategy was only 3.2 uh, lakhs right so the gross pnl was about uh, 17.5 lakhs and then after all the brokerage is paid we had 17.22 lakhs so if you really consider the actual money that went out of pocket which is 3.2 lakhs and and the the net pnl Uh, we are we are actually looking at a net pnl which is higher than what we saw on that particular sheet because that was calculated based on the the 4 lakh capital and this number is calculated based on the, the actual uh, money that was deployed which is 537 percentage in the last 5 years and 8 months which is which is really really good and the average holding period is about 59 days 59 calendar days so we have an xir which is a very healthy 48% here a quick look at the the uh, equity curve uh, the brown one is the strategy and white one is the nifty 50 i know the comparison is uh, you know some people might say you will have to compare it with the the small cap 100 uh, but i've done that as well and and the strategy beats the index you know a fair and square on that one as well right so and this is the monthly returns heat map uh, so you can look at the numbers for yourself for each of the month and for the for the entire year year and then if you look at the year on year strategy versus benchmark the the strategy is is, is beating the benchmark every single year and then you can see the comparison here vis-a-vis with the the nifty 50 returns this infographic gives you the portfolio growth versus the the out of pocket investment like i was telling we we started off with the 4 lakh investment but the entire 4 lakh was not invested close to about 3.2 was only invested uh, throughout uh, but this just gives uh, you know the comparison of how the out of pocket uh, you know fares up with the, the overall portfolio how much it grew right during that period so the entire trade book for this particular scenario that was tested is is all provided here so you can take a look at it like like this uh, for every single scenario iteration that we tested there are separate trade books and all of each of those trade book is also included within the the back testing package If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it uh, with your trading friends. It it really helps the channel grow. And do check out our community website fabreader. dot in. Uh, you might find a lot of similar useful stuff there. Right? So until next time, this is Vivek from Fabreader, wishing you profitable trades and peaceful wealth building. Thank you.